In this video, I'll tell you about the wargaming video topics I won't talk about and why I won't talk about them. I was looking for a topic for this week's video, and I was reading through a list of suggested topics submitted by you folks a few months back during an episode of the Every Other Sunday show, the live show I do on YouTube, you know, every other Sunday. I was looking in that episode for video ideas that pertained specifically to new hobbyists, and you folks gave me some really good ideas. I actually made a video out of one of those ideas relatively recently, talking about which paint additives to use when. You can see that video here. Pachow. As I skimmed through the list, I came across a few topics that I instantly thought, well, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. And after a few of those, I thought, why won't I talk about those particular topics? What makes them no good for videos? Is it the topic itself? Or like the way that I feel about those topics? Or just that they seem like YouTube poison, you know, or maybe a mix of all of those things? So I thought that talking about why I don't seem to talk about some of the certain topics might make a good video topic. It's, it's kind of meta, I understand. But here it goes. First topic, how to publish war games. This may seem like an odd request for a topic from one of my videos, since I mainly focus on how to get new players into, you know, wargaming and the building and painting hobby. And you'd be right. People just getting into wargaming probably aren't thinking about making their own games before they've really even played many games themselves. But that's not why people bring up this topic from time to time. They bring it up because of what Vince Venturella and I have been doing in our spare time. You may not know this, but for the last three or so years, YouTube's Vince Venturella, ciao, and I have been publishing war games rule sets under the company name Snarling Badger Studios. We make miniatures agnostic rules, which is to say that they don't have like an associated line of miniatures attached to them, like say Warhammer or whatever. You can just use any kind of miniatures that you might already have on hand or things that you wanted to check out anyway from different companies or whatever. We've produced three different games so far and they've sold nicely. Check out the website in the description below if you're interested. First and foremost, this isn't really a good topic for people who are new to wargaming. I mean, the whole, you know, how to publish wargames thing isn't a good topic. The wargames that Vince and I make, I think, are very accessible to newer wargamers. That's part of our kind of plan, but that's not where this idea comes from either. Publishing is a lot of work, and frankly, I'm not 100% that we're doing it right in any specific way, if I'm honest. Therefore, I don't know that making videos about it would be helpful to my audience. Maybe a like short mini documentary about us like doing a publishing or something like that could be kind of interesting, but I kind of doubt it would get many views. Views are pretty important, and though it sounds mercenary, it's not really for me. Yes, you know, more views on a video make more ad revenue for the channel, right? But they also make it easier to get the next video in front of more people. A video that is only interesting to a very, very small portion of people and therefore is only like watched by a small portion of people doesn't get many views. Uh, and then that kind of makes the next video that you produce less likely to get in front of viewers due to the YouTube algorithm. And my main goal is to spread the word about wargaming and miniatures. Now, this thing about views, unfortunately, doesn't just relate to this first topic, you know, publishing war games. It relates to all the following topics I'm going to talk about here as well. Each of the following topics have their own specific reasons to be on this list, you know, besides probably low views. But the views are always a consideration. When I'm picking topics, I always think, will this video apply to a wider audience of people getting into the hobby? There's other thoughts as well, but that's always, honestly, for me, a big one. Anyway... Onwards to the next topic. How to list build for insert game here. This is a request I see sometimes from people new to the gaming side of the hobby. They want to, you know, get into the game, but they're not sure how to start figuring out their list, you know, the, that they're going to build and play. Usually it's not that they don't know how. Most games that are even slightly successful make it pretty simple to come up with a list, whether it's the rubric of staying within a certain amount of points or a you know, certain number of models, or whatever it might be. Most times, people are asking how to build a good list, and that's where the problem with this topic comes from. 
frankly, no one should ever ask me how to build a good list in any war game. I'm not what you call strategically minded, which is why I don't play competitively like in tournaments and such, right? And also why Vince writes 99% of the rules in the games that we publish and I do the layout and the art direction and the marketing and the creative stuff, right? I still like to build lists for games I play, of course. I mean, but I, I have a tendency to aim for fun rather than competitive or good. And I actually did make a video about that, a chow called How to List Build Like a Doofus. It's pretty much what it says on the tin. The other big reason I don't make videos like that is that if I was talking about Games Workshop games in that situation, especially like 40K and Age of Sigmar, which are the most popular, then the video would probably be out of date in about six months. The competitive scene seems to be kind of driving the bus these days over in Games Workshop land, and that means rules changes and points updates come fast and furious, and a good list now probably won't be a good list for very long. I try to make my videos a little bit more evergreen than, you know, half a year. Certain games like Dead Zone and Battletech. I see people in the comments all the time that want me to talk about specific games. The ones I'll focus on here are Mantic's sci-fi skirmish game Dead Zone and Catalyst Game Lab's, you know, their big stompy robots game Battletech. Some folks seem to take it as a personal affront that I don't talk about those games more on my channel. I assure you, it is not a personal vendetta or anything as cool as all that. It comes down to personal interest and knowledge, or lack thereof. I hate to break it to you, but I'm not a journalist. I took journalism classes in school, but I'm not actually a journalist. I'm not here on my channel to present all sides of the wargaming news. I'm here to try to help new players and hobbyists get into the wargaming hobby. And the hobby is very, very broad. It has its biggest player in the market, of course, but there's tons and tons of other smaller games out there as well. Sometimes I focus on Games Workshop because it's usually what new players see when they start getting interested in the hobby. But I talk about others too. I try to talk about other game systems besides Games Workshop on this channel as well. My Why I Like It series has touched on a bunch of those. Here's a playlist. Pachow. But the title of that series is why I like it, right? I prefer to generally stay positive on this channel, and I also prefer to talk about game systems that I know about, things I've played and enjoyed. I started my wargaming journey with Battletech when I was in middle school back in the 1980s. I played it again in college for a bit, and I have tried it a few times since, but it's just not for me. It most certainly might be for you, however. Battletech seems to be very popular. I can find it in local stores, I know people are playing it. I know people who are playing it. Heck, they even had a Kickstarter a year ago going on during Adepticon uh, that like raised like seven, seven and a half million bucks. But not every game is for every person. And I wouldn't want or be able to make good videos about a game that isn't something I enjoy playing and painting. Again, I'm not a journalist trying to bring you the news. I'm a nerd in front of the camera trying to help you get into this hobby by sharing my enthusiasm for games I like. With Dead Zone, it's maybe more of a regional thing. I don't ever see it in any stores I go to around me here in Wisconsin, and there's a, a lot of stores here in Wisconsin and the Midwest in general. I think it's a much more popular game in the UK, so there's more places to buy it and more people to play with over there. When first edition came out, I bought the starter, and I built and painted terrain and two sets of figures, uh, Enforcers and the Plague. I tried to get it played with some friends, and it just it just never took. And then I got the second and third edition books, uh, which have been updated since then, and just still nothing. I'm sure it's a good game. A lot of people in the comments have told me that they like it. It just... It's never kind of like reached out and grabbed my interests. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's the rule set that does it for you, really. Sometimes it's the models. Sometimes it's the friends that you play it with, right? For me, it's pretty much never the lore that gets me into the game. And I don't know that there's a ton of lore for, for Dead Zone. So that's, that's fine. But Dead Zone just hasn't grabbed me. And I have a lot of other games that I enjoy and can talk about more competently in, in videos. You know what I mean? I can't talk about every game out there. There's so many. 
So some games just don't get exposure on my channel, and that's okay. There are other channels out there, or hack, start your own. Recasts and sketchy STLs. I don't want to talk too much about this topic, frankly, even here in a video about topics I don't like to talk about. It, as a creator myself, I'm against all forms of intellectual property theft and individuals or even companies that recast and sell models from other companies. They are committing piracy, pure and simple. I don't care if you think that the models are too expensive from that big company or you're trying to stick it to the man or whatever, or even if they're out of production, it's still piracy. The same goes for STLs, 3D printer files, right? That are either direct scans of other companies' models, and they usually look pretty janky because scanners aren't great yet, or they are like re-sculpts that look exactly like another company's models. The sculptor decided to try to copy it specifically, right? I don't mean someone who makes STLs, you know, uh, or sculpts of, of power armor soldiers, for example. GW doesn't own the concept of power armor. It's been a sci-fi trope in books and stories and stuff like that for years. I have no problem with you know, like counts as models, those are fine. It's when a sculptor tries to perfectly copy another sculptor's work as to be indistinguishable so that you can 3D print it and not have to buy the original. That sucks, and it's also piracy. If you're angry at a company and you want to stick it to them for whatever reason, buy their stuff used. Don't facilitate piracy, go on eBay or buy used from a friend or Facebook Marketplace or whatever you like. You still get the product you want, and you're not giving any more money to the company that you're mad at. Or go on My Mini Factory and find a model that you like that looks close to the model that you're looking for. Again, a counts as type thing. And then 3D print that as many times as you want. You might actually end up finding a new sculptor over there on My Mini Factory to follow and support. It's a win-win. Last topic, how to keep your hobby space tidy. I get this one all the time. And no one, no one should ever ask me how to do that, believe me. So this one was a little weird this week, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I always love to get topic suggestions from viewers, but I just wanted to let you folks know why some of them don't work for the channel. It's not that I'm ignoring your suggestion, right? Uh, it's, but you know, it's the reasoning that I just laid out here in the previous 15 minutes or whatever. If you have a topic, you know, suggestion, drop it in the comments down below. Uh, I read every single comment, so I'll see yours. If you liked the video, please hit the like button uh, to get like a little fun explosion, or maybe it's confetti. I'm still not 100% sure, but it helps the channel as well to get the word out to more people. Subscribe for more videos every single Friday, and thanks for watching.